Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to the 27th episode of ICPA Clinical Series. And uh, ICPA Clinical Series runs on the theme of each episode, one clinical challenge. Each episode we have uh, brought up a highly clinically relevant issue for our guest speakers who with their expertise and experience have solved it in the simplest possible way so that the dentist can carry the significant take-home messages to their clinics and apply it in their practice. And today, I have the great privilege to welcome one of the very well-known dentists, Dr. Sanjay Arora from Delhi. Dr. Arora did his BDS from Rohtak Dental College and then his MDS in endodontics from Nair Hospital Dental College, after which he started his practice in Delhi. He practiced endodontics for more than 10 years before he got interested in TMJ, musculoskeletal disorders, full body pains, and uh, the various aspects of TMJ towards which he developed keen interest, came up with a lot of uh, innovations, tried out different techniques, he has been a great learner, self-learner and a genius. And uh, his focus has been on occluding and relation to body diseases. And today he will give the clarification why he calls it occluding and how it is different from occlusion, how we commonly speak of. And uh, his research is focused on occluding and TMD. And... Uh, Recently, he has come up with his own in his innovation that is ALPDC technique, which is known as Aurora's lateral pterygoid dystonia correction technique. And he will also speak about TMJ and the full body connection. And uh, here I welcome Dr. Sanjay Aurora to start with his lecture. Before he starts with his lecture, I want to ask him, sir, what made you take such keen interest in uh, TMJ and full body pain and musculoskeletal disorders when you were doing so well in endodontics. You know, the story, you know, Rajiv was much earlier. I wanted to become a physician that is to teach my, you know, Class used to pass, and I would develop some of the other problem in the exam. Either my hand will stop working, or something or the other, or fever, and I would always miss it by one mark. So in that in that time, I did B.Sc. in physics, but I always basically wanted to at heart wanted to become a healer. And years later, I understood why nature God made me go through that process. And as I slowly started realizing that. I, we are the real physicians. You know, that's when, that's when, uh, the, as as a dawn, I forgot about endodontics and focused on the TND and basically the whole of the body disease. Great. So, sir, I'll let us begin with your presentation, and the stage is all is all yours. So basically, I'm in between losing Rajiv's voice. So I'm assuming he asked me to start it. So basically, this is a question for you. You know, are you a dentist? No, you are a physician actually. And if you do not know your science very well, you will not be able to convince this to a physician. You must have been hearing stories that almost all the chronic body pains and a lot of diseases in the body are basically connected to the temporomandibular joint and some say that it is connected to the dental occlusion uh, we will go into those details later but you must have been hearing those stories you know and uh, it's time you wake up and uh, if you are good at explaining that science then you will be able to convince the the current uh, designate, currently designated physicians that you are the actual physician when you start showing magic to them. So this is basically an introductory session and you need to first of all decide in your heart do you want to be a healer. For, for some reason the nature 
God has given you the power to heal and not the other physicians for these chronic chronic diseases. So let's let's see. Let's let me give you an insight today into this world. <clears throat> You know, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And it's time, friends, you know, cavity cutting, crown cutting, uh, periodontal disease. You, know, you, you can do much more, full mouth rehabilitation. You can do much more than what we have been taught in our dental schools. And for some time, I mean, all those things are important, but those things can lead a person to the disease and almost always does. And, you know, you can learn that thing, how to take it to your advantage that you do not cause disease and you cure the disease. For that, you will need to learn occlusion, occluding, and unlearn whatever you know in your past. And it's the most important thing that will be required from you today to wake you up into a very, very interesting field. So this is, uh, you know, I'm gonna show you in between, I'll be shifting and showing you certain videos. Uh, so this was, this is a case of Dr. Neerja Singla. She's a leading mag Some there are last minute internet issues. Uh, Raj Rajiv, can you see the video? No. No, sir. It is loading. Yes, and the chief complainer is great. 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 The chief so I stayed in the tree over long, but last attack was so bad that I had to take paroxetam. You have been taking painkillers every day otherwise? Almost every day. Almost every day. Sometimes even two or three a day. Alright. I mean, it started with paracetamol, and then went to over and then went to over on. And then went to, uh, all sorts of painkillers are very You have been going to positions? Uh, yes, I have taken uh, migraine treatment for long. Uh, I've even been on uh, Semitil and uh, Flunaren and Siberian for post or six months, but no release. Okay. Uh, Painkiller do give me transient uh, relief and I get back to my work and this is going on. I'm getting my cake. Oh. And uh, right, uh, again, left side, the uh, muscle pull, neck muscle pull is quite common. Every three to four months I have rest and after physiotherapy I get relief. Uh, for past one and a half months, almost I'm getting uh, back ache in the lumbar region and uh, my lateral side of the thigh, right from the you could say uh, pelvis till around the five six uh, inches above the knee, it's become you know, this is last one and a half months, months okay. old, old, old. It, it is uh, not exactly anesthesia, I can call it as dysthesia mm -hmm. because if somebody is sitting next to me also touches my thigh, it, it's like electric shock like sensation. Okay. I sometimes they also uh, I, I, I even cry out in the letter system that they are please stay with me. Okay, what about your TMJ clicking? You experience some TMJ clicking? Yes, I do experience 
Opening, opening yes. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, the video is not playing. The voice and the video is not in sync. You can yeah. continue the lecture without instead of the video. So you noticed. Post the orthodontic treatment. And all her problems aggravated that there is a it's a lot. Thanks for the treatment. Started back with my coffee is a nice. Sir, please don't play the video. Uh, the audience, is, the audience is saying that they are no, not. I always going to be. Go ahead, this is our group again. I'm aggravating. I just go. Now this is gone. So there, there is a the thing you need to notice is that all all the head to toe problems went away and you, you looked at her face, you know, what kind of a relief that she got. So this was done several years ago, almost like 17 years ago. And the treatment time at that point of time was 20 hours. But today, after researching for hours and hours and hours, I am very happy to tell you that uh, this Aroda's lateral pterygoid dystonia correction technique is just a five seconds of treatment. And the time treatment time is just five seconds. Analysis time is two hours but you actually treat the patient for just five seconds and the relief is achieved in 15 minutes in most of the patients for most of the problems. And 80% patients, years of chronic pains and perhaps all chronic disorders, perhaps because I haven't yet uh, applied this technique really to the uh, uh, other chronic disorders apart from the body pains because I haven't had the patient uh, I have had some patients, but like uh, for some reasons, we could not uh, do the uh, complete treatment because the patient was aged and there was a huge amount of uh, problems in the mouth. But uh, if a person has a reasonable set of teeth, then within a few minutes, we should experience the relief and the problems should vanish. Now, let me give you access to some of the patients who have been cured by these ALPDC technique and uh, observe all of them. There were treatment was done not more than five seconds. Uh, let's begin with some doctors first of all because that will make a lot of sense. So this is Dr. And works for uh, one of the company, Nick Payne's. And he will mention about diabetes. Today, we that is very. Slow, we don't know why. Sir, uh, sir, the presentation, the videos are not playing. <laughs> sir, the videos are not playing and nobody is able to make out anything. So the voice is not uh, something. Please something don't play videos. The there is a problem. audio files. This is another orthodontist. Sundar City went away in a few minutes uh, post the treatment first. And there are a lot of such 
patients so the so most of the patients they almost all the patients respond immediately i have a collage of some patients here but there are many many more going into that and let's move ahead with the slides something makes it the internet very slow today so other diseases they have been done previously and treatment time has been 20 to 200 hours apart from the you know what temporal mandibular joint pains and things like that for example this is a patient of severe respiratory distress and depression for 3 years and she was in uh, you know uh, on oxygen cylinders for 3 years she did not venture out of her house a senior politician and she was cured for 14 years 14 years later the problems came back we cured her again depression slight depression is still left and it simply goes away by these treatments uh, this is a case of a confirmed case of lichen planus erosiform which is highly cancerous and you can see this is how the young patient presented to me with a very concerned wife who was just married at that married uh, you know recently and he had severe uh, burning sensation with any kind of spices that he would take and you can see this uh, it was the patches these are the wick hem strays you can see and uh, this is uh, almost within a few days post the occlusal treatment you can see that it's completely gone the strays are completely gone you can see now under different light completely cured so this is a patient of costochondral pain and she says there has been no pain in the costochondral junction so i have not come for any further checkup uh, and here she says i have been experiencing a lot of pain in the costochondral junction imagine a patient who is primarily a dental patient talking to a dentist about things which do not concern a dentist and she has been to various doctors and you can see that uh, I, I wish I could so show you the video. There is this video of this lady who is my driver's wife, and she has been suffering from pain in the axillary region for one year, and she has taken almost 1,500 painkillers, and that too, very powerful with sedatives. And she has visited all India Institute of Medical Sciences down south, uh, somewhere in the West Bengal, Orissa or somewhere, Narayan Hospital, this hospital, that hospital, everybody has been writing and they, ultimately they came down to surgery, she used to howl and we have many such patients who used to howl and uh, we did a 5 seconds treatment, it's been 35 days the patient has had no pain whatsoever, the, she had complete numbness in the hand, the numbness is com went away completely after 2 days and by the 4th day it was gone. Uh, she just has it now at the tip of the finger and uh, uh, she could not lift her hand. Now she can completely lift her hand within four days time. As now being 35 days, she has been absolutely cured, no painkiller whatsoever. And she got relief 60% uh, within 15 minutes time. I wish you could see the videos. And when I, when I wanted to talk to her uh, orthopedician doctor, you look, uh, and she had been to Sabdajan Hospital also, and uh, wanted to talk to the doctor, he said, I don't have the time for this thing. So, but you know, I've also got a lot of accolades from the medical practitioners because I can explain to them in a scientific manner, and I would want you to learn and be able to present it in a scientific manner so that they understand. P. Vinugopal, the former director of me, a all in of medical sciences, Dr. Hari Prakash, again, head of prosthodontics, all, all, Center for Excellence for Dentistry. Then this is a senior uh, uh, surgeon in uh, London, and he says, God bless and keep up the good work, medical college. You know, wonderful, that is the word she's given. And many, many, many more doctors who have given. And that's the reason is that I'm able to explain. So for you to be able to explain, so the basic question that would be there is, is it occluding? So we, we're going to go into the science now. So the basic question is occluding or TMD and why not occlusion? And so for that, I would... 
I I hope this video this 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 has a force of a possible Sir, your internet is not able and, to handle videos. Please and, don't uh, play the video. Please don't play the hand. Yeah. He would have he would have got broken bones in that area. So so megapascals is the force that is exerted while eating certain foods in the mouth. Now this is equal to a Diwali bomb, a small Diwali bomb. Now Imagine what the nature has created, that this force, you don't experience at all. But if accidentally, if a child's finger were to go into your mouth while the child is feeding you, with, you know, uh, into your mouth out of love, and, and if your attention is somewhere else, you would actually crush it. So the force is an occluding and not an occlusion. Occlusion is a, is a bomb which has gone off already. And it is, uh, you know, there's nothing there. It's, it's a dissipated force. So the, what is happening when the crushing is taking place and the teeth are meeting, at that point of time, what is happening, how those forces are getting dissipated is the study of occluding. Now, is it TMD or is it occluding? The, the debate has been going for a long time. We have more than 500 patients completely cured for decades. And we're in a position to say that it is purely occluding. This, it has nothing to do with the temporomandibular joint. It is accidentally or for some reason, because the pain is there, so everybody is concerned that it, you know, there's something wrong in the TMD, temporomandibular joint, while there is nothing wrong there. So the definition of the temporomandibular joint disease or occlusal disease or whatever we may call it needs to be changed. So orofacial pain, myofacial pain, dysfunction syndrome, facial pains, half a dozen types of headaches, TMD, rest of the chronic. So what is, you know, there is no clear definition or should we call all of them as TMD? What about the rest of the chronic body diseases? You saw a lot of them getting cured. We have had success in diabetes, complete reversal within a few hours time and for years together or the rest or what about the rest of the chronic body diseases so should we call all as tmd or should we call as all as occluding disorder or occlusion disorder i recommend it should be called as an occluding disorder and so all chronic diseases should be classified as occluding disorders and not as tmd or not as what their terms are thousands of diseases and we have seen you know most of these diseases are incurable the textbooks completely clearly say that the real cause is not known and they sometimes blame posture they blame a lot of other things but the books clearly state the textbooks clearly state that the reason is not clear so so should all the chronic diseases be classified as tmd yes but better it should be classified as occluding disorders so the age X concept, it's an important concept. You know, if, if some people, so, so when you go, when we go for dental treatment, when somebody goes for a dental treatment, they land up with these diseases. And you need to start asking the questions to your patients. Uh, when did the problem start? And you'll find almost 70% of them after a dental treatment land up in some kind of a chronic body pain or asthma or respiratory allergies or something or the other. Now, not all go through that. So the, here is the concept, you know, if a person is standing at the edge of a cliff and if somebody were to push, you know, he'll fall down. And, but if the person were standing away from the cliff, you know, uh, so he's not going to fall down easily and he will be able to take three to four pushes. So some of your fillings and some of your crowns do not reduce the problem because his bite is such that it is some steps away from falling down but you, you, but an imbalanced occlusion, and almost always all the caps that we do, all the fillings that we do, are leaving some degree of imbalance. I wish you could see what what you know uh, what we see every day. And if you were conscious of it, you could prevent that, and you could 
draw the patients from those segment and your income can increase uh, dramatically so the so whenever a patient when, so whenever a patient comes to us for dental uh, treatment we screen them for the rest of the diseases we educate them and they opt for uh, you know a little extra treatment so that adds to your earning and uh, you know you add joy to a patient's life so the and your main question is what is the age x that is when did you start having a problem and if you typically ask the patient a month or two months or three months earlier to that they would have had a dental uh, treatment or a dental event maybe a tooth was extracted maybe tooth some some tooth got broken down or things like that so here is a, a you know a video which i want to show you i hope uh, it is able to support uh, so so this is a very important video although it is an occlusal disorder we need to understand and explain to the other doctors that why these diseases are connected so here take a look so you know this is how the joint behaves in the opening and closing cycle so opening has taken place and notice this cushion or the and i will be using layman terms and more of physics terms rather than biological terms because problem is more an engineering problem rather than a biological problem and you can see that the disc is very thin here and very thick here let's go back and see thick here and thin here and that's because this is the place where the clenching takes place and the force is the maximum here and opening is basically due to the gravity so there is no force exerted here so the disc does not need to be thick here so uh, you so that the disc travels along with uh, whenever the joint moves forward or backward now let's look at uh, you know what happens certain at certain uh, you know uh, imagine if you i wish you can i hope you can see my hands now if this were the two if this were the two uh, arches and this was the right and the left side and if one side teeth grind more than the other compared to the other then what happens is that as you close the jaw goes tilted on one side because there is a teeth have ground away or there are no teeth on one side and what happens then that there is a that there is a pressure on this area during the clench and the disc vanishes observe very carefully that as the jaw opens you know the we cannot see the disc immediately that is inside and you know since there are no dead spaces that is there are no empty spaces in the body the tissues inside are pushing the disc back and during the closing cycle the condyle shifts slightly downwards this is in in the prosthetics books it is uh, described as the kinematic axis of rotation shifts downwards during the closing cycle so what happens is that the disc gets that little space to come back and it comes back and this is the reason why the reductions take place and you know the displacements take place not any other reasons that are taught in the textbooks and this is where the clench will take place and since we remember that one side has ground away so you know there will be a bend and that bending will cause this disc to slip away again because there is a maximum force here and you see this is the reason why the displacement of a disc takes place so once again this is a very very important thing and it is more of an academic nature because there's no practical value that you get out of this but however to explain to a physician to the rest of the doctors you need to be able to explain why the rest of the body pain so this disc was one and a half inches deep you know it was it was it was a thin deep thing and so where did it go now that's the million dollar question that where did this disc go and so if we if is is called as the intratemporal fossa and the structures nearby 
So this is the, you know, we are looking at the skull from the bottom. And what we see is this is the condyle. And this was the glenoid fossa with, in which this ball and socket joint was functioning. And in between was the disc. Now that one and a half inches of disc folded itself into this area. And, you know, on this side, there is just a very thin membrane, while on the outer side, there is a thick ligament. But on the inner side, there is just a very thin membrane. And so either it would tear that membrane or push or fold itself into this area or slip into this area, but whatever happens, it is pushing the tissues of this area with a lot of force, so, because you can even sometimes hear the sound of the disc if you stand next to the patient. So there's a ma massive force that is happening. And if you look at the tissues just next to the glenoid fossa, this is the foramen, a veil from which the uh, trigeminal nerve comes out and the mandibular division comes and goes into the mandible from here, middle meningeal artery, internal carotid artery and sympathetic trunk and you know this is the uh, accessory nerve, vagus nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, internal jugular vein and C2, C3 fibers, there are auricular temporal nerves, facial nerves in this area and all so there is an infratemporal, so, so I propose this hypothesis, infratemporal fossa and the nearby structures, catastrophe hypothesis in found in 2012. This was presented and there are a lot of theories why the rest of the body pains are there because there's, there are observations, but this is the most scientific I believe. And when you explain it to another physician or a surgeon, uh, they get it and if you really know the subject, then you know they 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 have a mouth open when they're discussing with you and they have a reason to not contradict you otherwise they think you know it is it is all some jimicry that we are doing uh, and sometimes they ask for empirical data empirical data is something which you cannot refute is it like patient had a psychological relief or is there an actual relief that took place now that so to show that because pain is something where the patient would say Ki abhi nine hai, abhi char ho gaya, to is it is it because that the patient is uh, you know uh, uh, psychologically feeling uh, my wife is a dentist and for a long time she felt the same way that the patients are getting cured uh, psychologically till she had a very severe shoulder pain and it was rising and rising and I told her let let me do something about it and she would like no, 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 you know, it will settle down. And she's a she's a gym. And we did the treatment within simply went away. Very severe shoulder pain. She couldn't get up from the bed for half an hour due to that shoulder pain. So infratemporal fossa catastrophe, that is what takes place. And here is a critical accessory nerve. Accessory nerve, like you know, all the cranial nerves have super specialized functions. That is the one nerve is for vision, the other is for hearing, balancing, taste, smell, uh, control of the eyeball movements, you know, facial expressions. But this silly nerve has just a silly function and that is the 11th cranial nerve and the, it has a function of just controlling two muscles, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, you know, the upper back muscle. Now these two muscles basically hold the head on the uh, shoulder uh, and the body in a center of gravity uh, and whenever there is a disturbance of this nerve the head shifts its position right left center uh, forward and head is a six kilogram organ and off the center of gravity it behaves like a uh, almost a 30 kilogram organ and whichever tissues whichever muscles are bearing that load they tend to uh, you know create pains there are a lot of inter departmental uh, thesis on these subjects and they basically don't know what is the fundamental cause they know that dentistry cures it sometimes but they don't know why so this is an attempt to explain it in a most logical manner now some of you would be interested in um, empirical data something which is irrefutable so for example this lady had 10 years of migraine and now it's been almost 13 years that she's cured and she had been she was going to the top neurosurgery surgery hospital and had the right side pains in the head as well as knee pain of the same side and uh, she had not been out in the sun for 
almost a decade because she would land up with three days of massive pains. So this, this is called as, this is an electromyography. And if you see RT, LT, RM, LM, this basically means right side temporalis, left temporalis, right masseter, left masseter. And this is a T-scan. You don't need, today with the LPDC technique, if you really learn, you can contact me. Um, you don't, really don't need these devices, but they're very useful devices, T-scan and uh, electromyography. Uh, now, this tells basically the pressures on the teeth on the time scale. And uh, this is telling us that this, this line is telling us, this red line, that it travels from left side to the right side. And on the right side, you can see there is a small square, so which means the end. So, so basically, this is trying to say that the left side met first and then the right side met in the patient. So, uh, and we can see that the right temporalis has an electrical activity which is three times more than the left temporalis and the patient had migraine of the right side. So, uh, confirming the diagnosis and this is the post treatment. If you see the post treatment, the right temporalis has the almost equal, rather slightly lesser electrical activity than the left temporalis, which is also incorrect, but then the patient came later for uh, rest of the treatments. She could come partially because she was cured of her headaches and she's very happy doing that. And you can see now this line starts from the front teeth and comes in the center. By the way, most most prosthodontists when asked this question and orthodontists when asked this question, which teeth meets first, it is the anteriors which meets first. And um, even Dawson says that uh, all teeth meet simultaneously. And I have shown my disagreement at his site several times but I haven't gotten an answer. So if somebody knows him, please let him know. You know uh, so, so basically the front teeth meet first and that is why this vector, this line, force line is coming from forward to backward. So, so the patient was asked to do a right side motion, uh, right side grinding, and you can see that this muscle is completely haywire, right temporalis, left temporalis, completely haywire. Even masseters go into haywire when the patient is trying to move his jaw because for the chewing cycle, you, you do all, all sort of move, movements. You know. And this is the post-treatment. You know, the forces were on the posterior teeth. Posterior teeth are not designed to take the vertical load. And as soon as we, as soon as we built up the canines, so that the entire force, the sideways load is taken by the canines, you can see that immediately there was an improvement in the muscle. Uh, look at the before, look at left, left lateral grind, look at the muscles, look at the muscles post the treatment. Uh, look at the, this is, this is telling us what is happening inside the joint. If something moves inside the joint, which is the disc, then you can see these vertical pink lines. And otherwise, there are no such pink lines in the right joint. In the left joint, you can see these. And post the treatment, you can see both the joints are neat and clean. And so this is empirical data, which tells us that the patient got cured. It's a very, very big subject. I can go on and on and on and on. It's a, it should be, it should be a you know, super specialization within dentistry, the coding dentistry. Uh, I would call it a theoretical or an inductive or logical dentistry. We, you know, we, we throw studies at each other. Uh, can you show me a study? Can you show me a study? I mean, they wouldn't have studied quantum physics and, uh, uh, you know, the space had they, had they had proofs. So in other sciences, there is a theoretical physics, theoretical chemistry. We need to have a subject called as theoretical medicine. Or theoretical, you know, when you read the chapter in the textbook on uh, how to study, there's a lot. It, the chapter begins with the first paragraph into inductive thinking or logical thinking, and the rest is all about deductive thinking how to do the studies, retro trials, retrospective studies, cross sectional studies, longitudinal studies, a massive data. We forgot that the first paragraph was the logical thing. And we there is no encouragement into that. And I strongly suggest that we start thinking logically as well and then deduct because hypothesis is a function of uh, logical thinking, observation. And one single observation should be more than enough 
to wake up a person. We do, but uh, this is this, this presentation is basically an invitation for you to start thinking. Look at the possibility of becoming a physician. Challenge those physicians by showing them the cases. You cannot, of course, you cannot ask a patient with a neck pain to come down for the treatment. But if you do, then you know if they have an occluding disorder and you know how to prove that that is a occluding disorder, you can definitely touch a patient or a patient who has come for a dental treatment, and you can tell him, look, there is this canine gone away, or there is this sentry gone away, or there is this uh, you know uh, abnormal force being generated here, and if you just remove those forces. There's an almost instantaneous relief that the patient would have. And um, you'll have a sizable data. I'm there to help you out. I will be soon launching an online course. Uh, uh, very soon I'll be uh, doing that. Uh, but then, you know, uh, join the groups. There, Dr. Robert Kirstein. He's the great grandfather of occluding uh, occlusion. And if you can do his courses or his students like Dr. Prafulla Kumati, uh, there are many more students. Yeah, uh, you 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 can. Uh, but if you can reach the great grandfather himself and learn from him, it'll be it'll be great. Then I I have pulled in knowledge from other places as well as my own thinking, and I'm also available. You can start. I, I might be launching something where I help you diagnose and tell you what you need to do in that particular patient. If I get time, I I hope I can do that. So with this, uh, I guess I'm at the, one one more slide I would like to show you because that might add to your uh, thinking ability. Uh, People tell me bruxism is not curable, bruxism is not curable. It is very easily curable. And within like 10, 15 minutes, most of the patients can be cured. So I am not going to go into that today, but uh, I'm going to give you uh, something to think today. And, uh, you know, uh, that thought process will trigger you to become a specialist. Don't try to find out in two minutes what needs to be done. That is what is happening. Typically, one leading TMD specialist from India who wrote textbooks on the subject came to me and told me, you know, told me that I'm going to see this VVIP. Please tell me what needs to be done. I said, it cannot be told in one line. You will end up missing the entire thing. So anyway, so this, this is what I want you to understand. Whenever there are rubbing forces or tangential forces, if the tooth material is soft, you have observed Certain times when you're doing crown cutting, the crown cutting preparation takes place very quickly. And sometimes you wonder what is wrong with your work. So the teeth which have soft materials and when there is a rubbing force, the teeth will attrition. That is the reason for attrition, not the hard food. Uh, then if the tooth is made of hard material, very hard material, and if there is this rubbing force, then there will be bending of the tooth and what will be called as ab fraction which has been erroneously being called for decades together as toothbrush abrasion. Toothbrush cannot cause abrasion. It was erroneously written in the textbook. It cannot do that. No dentifrice has the ability to do that. And uh, if the root was short or tapering, I, I, on my Facebook there is a challenge which has thrown for more than 14 years to periodontist and Rajiv is a periodontist and he is also not commented. If the roots are tapering or short, then this forces will simply cause the foot to move and the bone will be lost around it. And uh, this is what contributes primarily to the periodontal disease when the forces, instead of becoming vertical, become tangential in the patient's mouth and then they cause a rubbing action. And if the tooth is material is hard and the root is short, they will shake the teeth away. So I was given time till 10.15. It is time, time is 10.15. I hope I have done justice. Uh, Dr. Raji, waiting for your instructions. Yes, sir. I, you have covered a very complex topic and uh, in your own style, and uh, you have been a think tank and uh, an original thinker 
who has uh, tried to simplify very complex concepts which have remained unsolved like you have been a puzzle solver for all those complex problems which had remained unsolved for many years and you have been trying your best i just uh, want to ask some questions on the same topic i remember meeting you in delhi and you told me how uh, all those narrow face people with narrow faces are more prone for uh, the systemic problems because the space for the space for uh, the neurovascular bundles is very less there and uh, people who usually have a wider space they have got more space for the neurovascular bundles and the compression the compressive forces are less so yes. this is when i i yes, learned yes. it i have removed the presentation yes. we can close the presentation we'll only discuss now so now uh, there are some people who are asking uh, so i i like to answer i'll answer i'll answer with it yes sir why so the question is uh, so, so why is you uh, if the fish focus on lateral tilt yes uh, you see now now i i was wishing this question would come so this lateral call for sir some areas are covered right now if you see in between this there is a muscle called as lateral pterygoid which travels from this condyle to this lateral pterygoid plate a hardly 1 inch of muscle and it is lying in the middle of those nerves so whenever the jaw so what is the function of this muscle is basically to and we are talking about infratemporal fossa catastrophe so what is the function of this muscle is to open the mouth singing speaking bringing it forward bringing it laterally right and left that's the job now this muscle and it's a very fine muscle one of the finest muscles now and is lying in the middle of these nerves very important middle of these nerves where there are no pain receptors around and this muscle if there is any impediment on the way of the functioning of this muscle particularly curved impediment so for example if i am moving my jaw forward or if i am doing a stroke let me show you the slide this is how how the chewing this is how the opening and closing cycle of the mouth is viewed from different planes but this is not the same when we are chewing it is grossly different when it when we are chewing and for chewing them it is different for meat is is different mutton it is different for beef it is different for pastry it is different and if in those chewing cycles it's like you know walking it's like running on a plain ground or with with stones or with very big rocks so if during the mastication where the massive forces of occluding are taking place there are certain teeth surfaces which are coming in the way but the contact is fleeting you are not experiencing anything on the tooth now that is triggering the lateral pterygoid muscle and the lateral pterygoid muscle lying in the middle of everything where the rest of the body diseases take place you know one is a pain in the local area that is due to the anterior disc displacement when the disc displaced forward that causes pain in this area but when the disc goes internally the medially then there it is in touch with the it is it is touching all those nerves and you know disc is basically that muscle only which is getting converted into the disc the muscle is ultimately converts into the disc so that disc uh, uh, there is a vibration or a tremor in that muscle that takes place when there is a overwork or an dystonic work or an abnormal work or something which is like you are running on rocks so you know it is very difficult to balance your body so if there is a rock like surface where it, it is highly uneven surface these after eating the food the patient start experiencing one or two hours later more problems uh, as you observe as you go deeper into the subject you'll find that eating 
and the disorders start coming after some time. Yeah. So, so I hope in this small time I could fire the imagination. The purpose was only to fire the imagination today. Uh, there are a lot more slides where I could have shown the you know a lot of things, but I wish I had more time. So I hope you get the concept. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, sir, if you can uh, uh, stop sharing the presentation, just click on stop okay. share presentation okay. because it is taking a lot okay. of uh, capacity. All right, I'll just do that. Just one second. Yes, sir. Now it is okay. perfect. Okay, so now the question is, uh, people want to know what is dystonia? Uh, dystonia is it's related to, to the tone of the muscle. Uh, hypertonicity, hypotonicity and dystonicity. It is like non-coordinated. You know, a tremor is a non-coordinated function of a muscle. So it's, it's not the fibers exert force in a coordinated manner in a single direction. Different fibers have different directions, but when the fibers start doing that in varying directions, then that's called as dystonia. Okay, so lateral pterygoid, because of its unique position and uh, uh, because it develops these tremors, we get full body pains and different systemic disorders. Yes, now, even the trigeminal even the trigeminal by the way. Ah, trigeminal. So neuralgia. trigeminal neuralgia now, is also an occluding disorder. You can call it yes. a TMD disorder, but it is actually an occluding disorder because you, I so, showed you that the trigeminal nerve is coming out very near, almost just one centimeter away from the condyle. Okay, okay. So now, sir, in your technique, ALPDC, what do you exactly do with the lateral pterygoid? How you handle it? So what we do is we, we, we basically click pictures of the patient's inside mouth we click the pictures of the models, we study the models, and we, f we look at what are the surfaces that are coming in the rubbing action in the occluding cycle. Yeah? Okay. And, with the, and if you have the help of T-scan and jaw tracker, which I just showed you the slides of, then you can identify those surfaces. Now, if you wrongly identify that surface, the patient till now did not know that the neck pain is happening because of the occlusion. So the other day I had gone somewhere and there was this patient talking to a Ayurvedic doctor saying Ki, I have very severe neck pain. So I told her, Ki, look, uh, this is due to the dentistry. So she says, Abhi char din pehle hi daat karwaya hai mene. So, tabhi se mere ko dard ho ra. So till that point, she, the patient doesn't know. So if you are rubbed the wrong surface, right in front of you, the patient will start crying. So this is a science which needs to be understood from zero to hundred and then applied. So, yeah. Okay. If I tell you a quick fix that just rub this and rub this, rub this, you will end up creating such a huge mess that one would not know how to get out of it. So that is why I recommend it should be so a in, a, in a in a, in a uh, short uh, uh, synopsis in a short in a concise way, if we can say, you will take clinical photographs, you will make all the investigations, you will do T scan, you will do you will use the jaw tracker, you will study the case completely, and you will identify those surfaces in occluding which yes. are causing all these problems. So you uh, treat those surfaces so that. Lateral pterygoid escapes dystonia. Yes, yes. And so, further so we, cascade uh, systemically uh, is prevented. Yes, we, we grind those surfaces with a very fine diamond. Micro, micro millimeter is shaved off and the patient becomes all right within a few seconds. Okay. So if so somebody... The entire focus is on, so the entire focus is on from tooth to treating the dystonia of lateral pterygoid muscle which yes, is the primary yes. muscle in jaw opening. Yes, primary muscle in the jaw opening, which is the primary muscle between the in, in the middle of those nerves which are supplying to the body and the blood vessels okay. which are going from the brain to the... Yeah. Okay. Sir, now we will take up some questions which have been sent by our uh, delegates. Uh, for patients who suffer from chronic body pains without an apparent cause, what steps 
that this can take to explore the possibility of dental occlusion being a contributing factor i think you have covered it in detail and uh, it is always the dental is, yes what is the idea behind using the thick articulating paper while setting the occlusion uh you know the, i would prefer the thickest because it is a it, the force is not when the occlusion has taken place the force is being exerted when occluding is taking place so that so the journey of the last point to mm is the critical journey so we need to know where in the last point to mm did it hit the wrong point so if i have a very thin paper then that will be the almost the end of the occlusion i need the beginning to the end of occluding which is the last point to mm we and the thin papers we, we are looking at very very thin point 0 to mm there is nothing there it is already exploded explosion is already done so that is why okay. i sometimes even stack up four or five uh, thick articulating papers to identify the right point okay so if i understand correctly occlusion is the end point once the teeth have closed while occluding is the dynamic process and during that process according to you that process is more critical and in that too the okay. last last part before the teeth establish the occlusion those 0.2 seconds yes yes okay that is occluding the rest is you know like ah. so, so, so it's a contact that of the phase. golf golf bat with the ball okay so in order to Sorry, record I that so in order to record the dynamic process you need a thick paper so that the last critical point point 2 seconds are recorded which surface is getting affected then you use a fine burr to remove yes. that fine part only that part which yes, is coming yes. in contact in the last point 2 seconds okay great and we have to we have to think from the point of view of mastication not the yes. not closing and opening the mastication cycles are different than the closing and opening cycles okay 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 so they are very so the next question they are very different so, yes sir so the next question is what has been your experience in the treating long term chronic mpds cases so they just almost all respond within a few seconds uh sometimes i have two or three patients i have given up in my life and but in retrospect when i look back when i know i now know what could i have done there you know so it's a holistic understanding of the 3d model in your mind is very important before you you know so this cannot be covered in such a small time uh, because occlusion is taught in the uh, our chapters occlu which is hardly also taught and occluding is a, is something which is you know not learnt literally at all okay okay next question any contraindications for this technique if we want to be very careful don't don't touch the patient till you understand it very very deeply you know okay. unless you have assisted somebody with at least 10 patients or you have discussed the models you are welcome to you know i i'll be very soon i wish i get some time i'll be launching a website for a diagnosis and giving the treatment planning for that patient and you will not need these costly tests also neither t scan nor uh, jaw tracker or anything if you have them it's very good if you don't have them still that site will be able to tell you what needs to be done precisely and i'll along with tell you why but don't don't attempt till you have done 10 to 12 cases under some assistance or guidance because to bring back the patient can take years you know it can take years to bring back the patient because you have as i explained if a patient has a bite which is very standing next to the cliff he will fall 
and you, it is impossible to bring him back but if a patient is you know uh, so sometimes you grind the teeth and nothing happens so you say nothing happened but when you see a very tough patient particularly deep bite patient when they go for a toss they go for a toss okay okay the next question is how is the response of chronic migraine cases which have not responded to conventional treatments very very good. almost immediate almost immediate i showed you uh, one migraine case empirical data and there is a we have large number of you know i wish you could listen to the audios the all those yes. patients had severe headaches you know and within like okay. 24 hours completely in fact in 15 minutes you see the joy on the faces we have cctv footages where you will see the joy on the faces like suddenly and a crying before okay, no no don't touch you know don't this thing when you tell them okay, look I, i tell them standard that every medical treatment can cause complications some are known some are not known so so but the you know so that time they get really afraid because i i know it can create a lot of problems so uh, and today's courts don't understand that the doctors are trying to help also at the same you know so mm. okay so uh next one is how is bruxism and clenching causing body pain no bruxism has nothing to do with the body pains they are two separate uh, things you know the, when the disc uh, travels medially or pushes medially even slightly then if the accessory nerve is closed normally accessory nerve is just 0.1 mm away from the glenoid fossa so so in some patients it may be little more closer you know so bruxism has nothing to do with the body pains they may have body pains because the disc is so it's a apt word is a dominoes disease you know dominoes effect like one cycle you push then it pushed another cycle and pushed another cycle so bruxism is a completely different disorder it's a very simple disorder to cure what is bruxism you know if somebody were to put a gun to your head and ask you to hold a bucket full of water and uh, hold it up yeah uh, and so you would normally not be able to hold it for more than a few seconds but if there's a gun you might stretch for an, a minute or so but the moment that bucket will fall down this muscle of yours will you know give massive spasms that's what bruxism is so okay. there is a fo- there, so there is a forceful uh, something which is causing your muscles to you know relive that moment again and again and as a doctor you do not know what is causing it the moment you know what is causing it it gets cured then and there i gave an example of a dean of a medical college he had very severe bruxism his wife was a head of the department of pedodontics and you know he had severe bruxism it's been 20 years he's completely cured and we did a treatment for just a 2 3 hours okay okay so someone is asking how can we learn this technique so i am there on the facebook you can look for the most handsome dentist on the facebook <laughs> and i'm <Yes>. there <laughs> and so okay. from time to time i i do give a little bit tip bits as well as i there are groups where uh, I, right now i am i am more interested in discussing with the trainers because i believe you know everybody has a different point of view and we need to all amalgamate together but i'll be soon launching hopefully within another two months a complete program where you can go through a course and you know online course and you will learn it completely without my physical presence in that great uh next question is splint or dtr and by the way uh, by the way i need to say uh, one thing for the previous question whenever rajiv organizes a big course <laughs> the splint is an absolute no no absolute no no first of all it is not a biomimetic thing we talk you know wherever it suits us we talk biomimetic biomimetic dentistry wherever it doesn't suit us we talk you know ki splint is the better thing no you don't know your subject that is why you are bringing the splint inside what if you know the subject what is the function of the splint god did not give us a splint and dtr is a wonderful 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 treatment invented by dr kirsten that is one of the aspects which i have found out because there were certain cases which were not 
coming under that so so you know i thought and thought and looked at a time dependent uh, changes that are happening in the mouth and uh, i produ- i got some good results in that so we all need to pile our knowledge together dtr is wonderful course great sir uh next question is about acute add i think anterior disc displacement no well, it's a it's same thing you know a basic okay. thing is there is a you know imagine a door okay and uh, the joint the joint of the door is the temporomandibular joint okay and if there is a pressure there something disturbing there now the problem is not at the temporomandibular joint the problem is at the fitting of the door which the rain has caused the fit problem so if you know the fitting what is the problem the door will the the the, the you know the joint will auto- automatically take care of it so uh, the uh, acute uh, the cases they solve immediately or, or almost all these cases which i have to present here all of them had a very limited mouth opening very severe pains also apart from the rest of the body pains and they become all right within a few minutes you know so so they are they are looking at disc what is wrong with the disc there is nothing wrong with the disc there is a force inertia something is causing the disc to be pulled or pushed you need to look at that force so it has been erroneously called as temporomandibular joint disease that is the problem everybody is looking here they pull the disc back if you have not settled the force which is pushing it back pushing it for in the first place what will you do while pulling it it will again get pushed now this time it may not get pushed anteriorly it may get pushed medially but then you say neck pain no that is not my field if you if you parkinson that is not my field you know if it is multiple sclerosis it is not my field we are saying everything is our field great so this is actually broadening our entire uh, spectrum of this yes yes there are there are okay. articles there are scientific articles where dentists have produced amazing results in cancers in uh, do- uh, dr gerald smith you should look at his he cured his wife uh, from the last stage of cervical one of the most toughest cancers to cure and most killing cancer and within 3 weeks from the last stage to complete cure you know that, uh, he has uh, he's the he was the uh, head of the international body of oral medicine and radiology his videos are available there are people who have cured parkinson there are people who have cured multiple sclerosis massive results are coming worldwide great sir now the last question of uh, today's session uh, what is your experience with patients with gastroesophageal reflex reflux uh, case? just one case i had a massive massive response Uh, he had a very severe diabetes uh, despite uh, 600 units of insulin his uh, blood sugar level he was a journalist his his, his uh, uh, videos are available on my website and uh, we even took him to all in institute of, he was completely cured his his blood sugar levels without any medicine were at 72 for almost 4 years 5 years we followed it up one bridge came off he became diabetic again we bridge was put back he became non diabetic again i'm not in touch with him now for 3 4 years but for 6 years i followed up that case and uh, that patient had very severe gastric issues and he reported a complete reversal and we even went to all india should did a presentation to the doctors there they we we asked them to look uh, the bridge is not yet cemented we will cement it and take it off with a temporary cement and the patient will become diabetic and non diabetic within 2 hours time and uh, if uh, you know uh, we want you to observe it keep the patient for 25 days uh, which is the you know your uh, patient was willing but uh, they even ordered uh, the admission we have that written thing also but for some reason you know red tapeism in our country that patient was not given admission ultimately because the doctor who consented to doing that was a middle order professor so maybe some head of the department yeah put us for down that's typically what happens yeah. okay so there is one person who is asking is there any if we can recommend any experienced doctor in this issue in bangalore 
Uh, Dr. Ravindran and Dr. Prafulla Thumati, they are in that south, I don't know which, uh, which uh, exact places they are there. Dr. Prafulla Thumati is a DTR expert and uh, Dr. Rajesh Ravindran is, I think, doing something in the... Uh, Las Vegas Institute. Uh, no, I think he has some other school of thought, ICMO school of thought that is there. Uh, some, so I don't know about his hypothesis, but... I believe he is doing good work. Okay, Mr. Rajat Arora, Dr. Rajat Arora, you are asking about somebody in Bangalore. So, Dr. Sanjay Arora spoke about two doctors. One is Dr. Rajesh Ravindran and second one is Dr. Prafulla Thumurti. Just confirm if they are from Bangalore. If they are from Bangalore, I think you have got the right people around you. But they are doing, but they, but they are not doing LPDC technique yet. Okay. So, you have to close the session, but there is one new question. If a patient complains of uh, stuck joint in TMJ, which chewing? Same, same. All problems have the same solution. The problem is in the the problem is in the closure of the door. There is not, you know, I want to end it with one small seven line story. It is very important. There was this lady who was searching for something for half an hour. So a gentleman walks up to her and says, ma'am, may I ask you what are you searching for? And she says, I had a gold pin which got lost. So she sa he says, so, so let's do it methodically. Tell me the exact place where it got lost. So let's search there. So she points to a place 20 feet away. So this guy says, but why are you searching here? And so the lady says, because there is light here. There is no light there. You know, so we, we look at what is the pain here. So hence we are focused here while there is nothing there. It's all in the okay. occlusion. Great, sir. Great. So, thank you, Dr. Sanjay Arora, for uh, elucidating so well. And it is not an yes, easy sir. topic to talk about. Easy topic to talk about. And uh, I must congratulate you for developing such an amazing expertise and insights about this science. And uh, you have shown so many cases, not only to the dentist, but also to so many medical specialists. And uh, your research has been an eye opener. I wish you all the best. Come up with many more techniques so that everybody benefits from your innovations. And uh, thank you for taking out time and educating all of us. And for me, oh, thank you. myself, this has been an eye opener. And uh, I felt, although I don't belong to this occlusion TMJ, uh, they are all very remote topics for me. But even I got interested in this. I hope I'll be troubling you in the coming days. Whenever I get sure. doubt from this topic. And uh, with this, let us end the 27th episode of ICPA Clinical Series. I, I must thank you. I must thank you, first of all, uh, for bringing welcome, the welcome. knowledge. My pleasure. This is the most important thing. You know, we, you and me, will be gone in a few years. And this is the best thing we can live, you know, leave for the next generations to come. And you are doing That's a right. tremendous job in that area. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. So with this, we'll end the 27th episode of ICP Clinical Series. The theme is each episode, one clinical challenge. And uh, soon we'll be announcing the 28th episode. So watch out for our social media channels and our announcements. And uh, let us end this session. Very, uh, very pleased to have Dr. Sanjay Rora, sir, with us. And uh, Thank you. If, if possible, after one year, I would like to invite Dr. Sanjay Arora again just to have the newer yes, data. If I live. If I live. live. If I live. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So, good night, everybody. Take care and see you all very soon. Good night. Good night. Good night.